This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Why has the Starship launched on its orbital flight yet? The FAA recently announced another delay to the environmental review, this time to June 13th. With all these delays, is the FAA at fault for the heavily delayed orbital test flight of Starship? I'm Hagen Warren, and today we'll dive into where SpaceX is at now in this Boca Chica Starship update. First off, let's discuss how SpaceX is doing in terms of vehicle readiness. Booster 7, which is currently expected to be on the first orbital test flight, completed pneumatic and cryogenic tank testing in April on a new structural test stand. But during this testing, the methane transfer tube inside Booster 7 was damaged and the vehicle was rolled back to the production site for repairs. Workers seemingly rebuilt the transfer tube inside the vehicle, and once work was completed, it once again rolled to the orbital launch site on May 6th. Booster 7 was lifted onto the orbital launch mount the same day and completed additional cryogenic tanking tests on May 9th and 11th. The vehicle was once again moved back to the production site on May 14th. As of this recording, it resides inside High Bay 2, also known as the Mega Bay. There, according to Elon Musk, it is receiving its flight set of Raptor 2 engines. Once this is complete, hopefully within the next week or two, it will roll back out to the launch pad to begin its static fire campaign. Elon also said that at first, they plan to fire one at a time, which may mean they plan to fire engines in one ring at a time rather than literally one engine at a time. Super Heavy Boosters feature 33 Raptor engines, arranged in three rings. It is possible that they will start with the inner three engines, then the middle 10, and then the outer 20. Should Booster 7 pass all this testing, which is a big if, then it will likely be assigned with a major task, helping loft Ship 24 to orbit. And speaking of Ship 24, a large amount of progress is being made on that vehicle as well. Following a relatively slow assembly sequence over the past few months, Ship 24 rolled out from the high bay on May 26th, and made its way to the launch site. There it was moved to the ship cryostation, near where Booster 7 was previously. It underwent pneumatic proof testing later that day, and again on May 27th. Pneumatic testing pressurizes the vehicle with relatively warm nitrogen gas to ensure it has no leaks. During testing on the 27th, a large amount of heat shield tiles were damaged and broke off during testing. It isn't exactly clear what happened here. Although it was initially speculated that this could have been caused by a tank vent, there are no vents on that side of the vehicle. Workers were later seen removing a bent pipe from the vehicle, which may point to an internal problem causing the tiles to break off. We recently did a deep dive into Starship's thermal protection system and reviewed some tile issues like this one. Be sure to check it out. We'll put a link in the description. Testing of Ship 24 continues on June 2nd as it completed a cryogenic proof test. Elon later confirmed on Twitter that the test was a success. Ship 24 was then moved to suborbital Pad A to undergo thrust ram testing during cryogenic proof tests. Pad A has been outfitted with six thrust rams, which will connect to the six Raptor engine mounts. When the vehicle is pressurized and loaded with liquid nitrogen, these will push on the engine mounts, simulating the thrust of six Raptor engines firing. Following those tests, the vehicle will be outfitted with three sea level and three vacuum Raptor engines and go through its own static fire campaign. Similar to Booster 7, should all these tests go well, Ship 24 will be assigned to the orbital test flight, where it will carry one or more Starlink 2.0 satellites to orbit. So the two orbital vehicles seem to be making good progress, but even if they look pretty much finished, that does not mean they are anywhere near ready for flight. We'll come back to these in a bit. But before that, here's my good friend Jack to tell you about today's sponsor. Thanks Hagen, and thanks to Squarespace for making this video possible. Look, I'm not a web designer, I'm not a graphic designer, but I am a person that needs a website for a variety of reasons, and for that I use Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform where you can build your online presence or business. They have a bunch of great-looking designs that are easy to customize to your exact liking and needs. With Squarespace, even a troglodyte like me can make a website that looks great. I set up my website as an online store to sell prints of my photos, as well as a place to show off my portfolio. Using Squarespace, it was remarkably easy to set up. Squarespace also has the ability to let you connect your various social media accounts to your website so that when you tweet something hilarious or post a cool photo on Instagram, it shows up how and where you want it to, negating the need for you to log in and cross post it yourself. And of course, they have excellent looking and informative analytics to help you figure out what's working and what isn't. Head to Squarespace now for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash NASA spaceflight to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. On the ground support side of things, it seems that work is finishing up. But again, just like the flight vehicles, the GSC is not ready yet. The propellant loading systems at the orbital site seem to be at least mostly complete as SpaceX performed a cryogenic proof test of a full stack back in March. 
There have been numerous propellant deliveries to the orbital tank farm as well, including many liquid methane trucks. This points to the system being placed in a readiness state. The orbital launch mount itself is still undergoing some work. Crews have been working on the booster quick disconnect, including installing a second cover on the umbilical to protect its propellant lines during launch. It was later removed, pointing to it being a fit check, or perhaps there were some issues. A water deluge test was performed at the orbital site in late April. This system will help protect the pad and surrounding infrastructure from the extreme sounds of launch and engine testing. The launch tower is also still undergoing work, but seems to be nearly finished as well. Work is still ongoing on the quick disconnect arm, which had a large amount of hardware, including the claws or stabilizer arms, removed earlier this year after full stack testing. A new ship umbilical has been installed, but the claws that wrap around the top of a booster to stabilize it have yet to reappear. The Star Factory and Mega Bay also deserve a mention, although they are not related to progress on the orbital test flight. The new factory is making quick progress as metal sheeting is going up on the walls. The Mega Bay is similarly making quick progress and has even begun processing vehicles, and Booster 7 is receiving its Raptor 2 engines inside. Both buildings will be critical in increasing the pace of Starship and Super Heavy assembly lines. Future vehicles beyond Booster 7 and Ship 24 are making progress as well. Booster 8 is nearing the end of stacking and is currently in two pieces. Its methane tank is inside the mid bay, while its LOX tank, mounted to the engine section, is inside the high bay. Assembly of the vehicle should be complete within the coming weeks. Also, Ship 25 may begin assembly soon. Parts of it are scattered around the production site, along with many for Ship 26. Parts of boosters 9 and 10 have been seen as well. In addition, a mysterious section labeled E-Dome was spotted, and maybe a test tank to validate the new flatter domes that have been spotted around the site. These flatter domes, which are made of only one kind of stamped panel, would simplify production and allow the propellant tanks to have a larger volume. A large box-like structure has been assembled at the site as well. It appears to have a short but long door at the bottom, similar to the Starlink deployer door on Ship 24. It is possible that this could be a structure to load Starlink 2.0 satellites onto future ships. Also at the production site, Ship 16 was moved from the rocket garden into the main production site, where it's been slowly scrapped. This was the vehicle set to fly after SN15, but was later set aside as SpaceX realigned their sights on orbital flight. Ship 20 has since been moved to the rocket garden, as it completed its test campaign and was demoted from its prior role of being the first orbital starship. Interestingly, Booster 4 remains at the launch site, likely as a display piece or just waiting to be scrapped. So, bringing us back to the main question, is the FAA really the one to blame for Starship's delays? Well, even if the FAA gave approval to launch back in December of last year, SpaceX likely still would not have been ready for an orbital launch. It was initially expected that Ship 20 and Booster 4 would make the debut orbital flight, and both vehicles actually made it through a significant amount of testing. However, SpaceX's mind was changed or something broke, because Booster 4 never performed even a single static fire test, even though it had all the engines properly installed. But regardless, the ground support infrastructure just was not, and still is not, complete for an orbital flight. SpaceX installed new methane tanks to replace the flawed Starship-derived ones. These have only recently begun to be filled, meaning they were only recently certified. So even if everything else was ready, there still would have been no way to get methane into the full Starship stack. And even today, the new set of vehicles is still not ready for flight. Booster 7 is still receiving its flight set of engines, and only recently had its grid fins installed. Ship 24 is missing hundreds of thermal protection tiles and even the caps for its flap aero covers. Neither vehicle is even close to finishing its testing campaign. But luckily, it seems that we're actually close to an orbital launch for once. Elon said on Twitter that the next full vehicle stack, another major milestone towards flight, should occur within the next few weeks. This stacking may give SpaceX the opportunity to conduct a full wet dress rehearsal as well as potentially a booster static fire with ship on top. Keep in mind that there are many issues that could pop up during Booster 7 and Ship 24's ground testing that result in the need for repairs, as we have already seen. If those issues are severe enough, there could be a shift to either Booster 8 and or Ship 25. Or even worse, there could be a testing mishap that results in damage to the GSC and results in further delays. Also, SpaceX only recently began ramping up production of Raptor 2. Booster 7 and Ship 24 are not compatible with older Raptor 1 engines so SpaceX had to produce at least 36 sea level and 3 vacuum engines for this set of vehicles alone, and that doesn't account for engines failing on the stand. Ultimately, the FAA is not at fault for Starship's delays. SpaceX is. And if the report comes back later this month with a FONSI or finding of no significant impact, we could be closer than ever to seeing a full-stack Starship lift off from Boca Chica. And that's all for this Boca Chica Starship update. 
Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out our flyover of the other Starship production site at Roberts Road in Florida. Also, stay tuned to our daily updates from Boca Chica to be up to date on everything Starship. Once again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next time.